Israeli cabinet decided that Israel would attend the Geneva Peace Conference under the terms of the Wilson Paper drawn up by Secretary of State Cyrus Vance and Israeli Prime Minister Moshe Dayan. The decision was immediately signaled to Washington, where it must have brought a sizable sigh of relief to the State Department. It was as if Minister of Dayan had his face in that position at home. Here's more on the story from Bill Moore in Jerusalem. The Board of Directors of the Baptist General Convention will meet here next Friday to decide what to do about sex change operations at the Baptist Medical Center. The operations have caused great debate. Some churchmen for, some against. But Friday's meeting will only be the latest chapter in a conflict between medicine and religion which goes back centuries. It's ironic that the two have been at odds. In medieval times, it was the monasteries which developed the first hospitals. Religious orders were the first nurses. But it was also religion which put constraints on how much doctors could interfere in the natural order of things. Smallpox caused one of the greatest confrontations in this country. Many ministers were opposed to inoculations, but the great Puritan leader, Cotton Mather, was a supporter of smallpox inoculations. The doctors won that battle. Of course, Protestants didn't have the corner on religious scruples. Many Indians also refused out of fear of offending their own God. The man who discovered the first anesthetic gas was an English minister, Joseph Priestley. But the first doctor to use anesthesia in childbirth raised a storm of criticism from the clergy in 1850. One opponent wrote, since God Almighty, in his wisdom, thought fit to impose suffering upon women, it would be impious to run counter to the will of the Lord. That dispute raged for six years. Queen Victoria finally settled it. The queen was having her seventh child and decided she could use anesthetic. The English decided that the queen could not possibly be in conflict with the word of God. It's quite a jump from Queen Victoria to sex changes, of course but many of the arguments will be familiar when the directors meet next Friday. The setting decidedly modern, the questions age old. Charles Stacy, Channel 4 News. Our major point has been that they are figuring average class size instead of actual class size. And uh, by reporting averages to the public, they're being uh, covering up, I think is the best way to describe it, the actual overcrowded classroom situations. And at the last school board meeting, in defense of the school board's position, uh, Mr. Donworth stated that the legislature shares responsibility for setting class size limitations and that we as teachers should spend part of our time at the legislature seeking relief to the class size problem. And uh, that's partially true, but also to, in our opinion, uh, eliminate all excuses that school board members are using to not addressing themselves to the class size problem. We are addressing ourselves to the way that the state legislature could solve the problem. I, I'm debating whether I'll, if I'll even vote. I, you know, I just, uh, I just don't know what to do right now. I'm really confused. They're, 
they're pressuring from both sides and like for instance one of them comes up and says well will you vote ACT and if you say well I think so he'll mark you down on his little checklist and then the AFT member will come up and say will you vote AFT and I said I don't know yet and he'll mark you down on his on his little checklist and so evidently they both got me marked down as voting for both sides. I don't know which way I'm going to go. I really do not have, you know, a definite answer for that. What's your It's got a little bump in it. You can see it starting right there. If we begin to watch this now for the next hour or so, it'll cover up, cover up quite a bit more. <laughs> I can't see it. Right now, how much more do you think we have? That's why you never want to look at the sun, because it has a lot of energy. People used to actually believe that. They used to think, like the Chinese people, used to think a dragon would come out and take a great big bite of the sun. And they made, all right, then they made lots of noise to scare this dragon away, and sure enough, it went away. Right here, and in a few seconds, you'd notice something. Not that much. It's got a little bump in it. You can see it starting right there. Yes. Exactly. In the Pacific, it's going to be total, so the whole sun will be covered up. Yeah, I know that, but right now, how much more do you think we're going to have? I don't know. I'd have to figure it out. It's just about a whole lot bigger than the moon. It's cloudy with you. Recommendation. People like Jean Leroy Hart escaped from jails. This is the guy that killed the Girl Scouts, or was alleged to have killed the Girl Scouts. Uh, I mean, it's a serious problem. And people think that the jail standards simply relate to healthful conditions or good working conditions for the employees. But actually, uh, if, if you thought we had a problem in the state prison system a couple of years ago, go visit your jail. At this hour to decide the future of sex change operations at Baptist Medical Center here in Oklahoma City. The operations were suspended until this executive board of the Baptist General Convention could vote on the issue. The news media has now been excluded from the debate, but it's felt that the outlook is dim for the operations. Most of the directors are Baptist pastors who generally oppose sex change operations at the hospital they own. The convention decision will be announced at a news conference this afternoon. From downtown Oklahoma City, this is Pam Holliday, Channel 4 News.
the cost for that small an operation was just too high. And uh, so we had some good family daycare homes uh, just kind of give up rather than to go through the bureaucratic process. And uh, so we sought to change that. Uh, also, uh, we're having a hard time placing infants in child care centers because of the cost. So your large child care centers now I like to go from two years to five years because of staffing ratios and things like that. So we're hopeful that the daycare homes will be able to take these infants and uh, young toddlers and um, provide a good, good place for them uh, at a reasonable cost. dollars being spent and I think this is one of the uh, and fair employment opportunity for the people of our region agriculture with the total of new dollars being spent if the old formula had been kept the formula stayed the same and we simply they quote the president is saying that this legislation must not herald an age of regionalism in the Congress. Effective and workable solutions to national problems will be welcomed. But narrow regional approaches which flagrantly discriminate against the South will not be tolerated. But if we could have just done, instead of going back 38 years and counting the houses that existed 38 years ago, if we could have doubled that and gone back to 1854 and counted the number of burned houses that we had in Georgia when Sherman got through, <laughs> there would have been no, there would have been no other city that would have been restored and helped as we would have been. <laughs> but. I'm not advocating that we do that. As I reported to the governor, we looked into this matter. Uh, there were some problems uh, involved in that investigation, some of them committed by employees of this agency. Uh, I think in view of the circumstances at the time that uh, most of those, while regrettable, are, are in the area of, of uh, uh, human mistakes. I do not anticipate any uh, disciplinary action. Uh, we hope that we can avoid such mistakes in the future, and uh, we'll take every, make every effort to do so.
Oklahoma City decided to drop the Biltmore Hotel in the interest of urban... You know, have you ever gotten the feeling about this administration in Washington that it seems to know a great deal about very little? <laughs> and when they talk about that energy program of theirs, it always makes me think of the fellow that went to the fortune teller. She looked into the crystal ball and she said, oh... I see for 40 years you're going to be miserable, unhappy, and broke. And he said, and what then? She said, nothing, by then you'll be used to it. <laughs> The fatal flaw remains, a basic treaty covering our rights between now and the end of the century. That is the assumption that we can expect smooth, trouble-free operation of the canal by giving up our right of sovereignty that we now have as a result of the 1903 treaty. That exercise of right of sovereignty is to the exclusion of Panama's exercise of sovereignty. Too many Americans aren't aware that the United Nations recognizes the right of a government today to expropriate foreign-owned property within its borders. It's an international license to steal. Without the right of sovereignty, our canal facilities just are foreign property on Panamanian soil. If the government of Panama decides to nationalize the canal and tells us to get out before the year 2000, there isn't anything we can do about it because that same United Nations Charter forbids a member nation from using force of arms to redress a grievance. But there were so many different days of importance in, one of the, in the ending of World War II that it's nothing like World War I and it had no meaning like World War I. And uh, as we thought when we went in there and all the time we were in the service that uh, we were fighting a war to end all wars. And that's about the main reason I can give for, for our wanting to retain that day. It's, uh, it has a, some feeling for us. I don't know why, why it could be so different, but it's, uh, we have a little different feeling toward that day than any other day in the, in the year.
now with this volume of little people and three quarters of a mile away to Wilson House with nothing in between it except woods. I ask you please, gentlemen, and I think perhaps we are a bit more concerned than we would have been this time last year as a result of the camp tragedy last summer. We can't help but be. So if you please, would you help give these little girls a safer deal? We have had absolutely no incidents as a result of the center being there. The, the college was concerned that the enrollment would drop in half, that the, that the evening enrollment would absolutely cease for the women who had to walk past our center. The enrollment is up 20%. I really feel that the fears are real, but they are not well-founded. We also have a center on campus, I mean right next to the women's dorm in Enid at Phillips University. The president, the past president of the college tells us they have never had an incident with our people. So while your fears are real to you, I, I, I'm convinced that they are unfounded. Now, with this volume of little people and three quarters of a mile away to Wilson House with nothing in between it except woods, I ask you please, gentlemen, and I think perhaps we are a bit more concerned than we would have been this time last year as a result of the camp tragedy last summer. We can't help but be. So if you please, would you help give these little girls a safer deal? I really feel that the fears are real, but they are not well-founded. We also have a center on campus, I mean right next to the women's dorm in Enid at Phillips University. The president, the past president of the college tells us they have never had an incident with our people. So while your fears are real to you, I, I, I'm convinced that they are unfounded. Cut it off. So you're showing your thumb. In the techniques uh, used previously without the use of the microscope, the success rate varied with the experience of the operator, with the technique used, and it varied anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. Utilizing microsurgery techniques, we are certainly hoping for uh, success rates in the nature of oh, 80 percent. That's a reasonable figure at this time. Two layers of surgery, one layer in the muscle wall, Another layer on the outside, needle in here. But these needles are much of stuff inside. Yeah. Gentle, we deal with it there. Careful, we're moving I'm here. I'm sure y'all are very safe. Very safe. 
In fact, we're sex physiologists. Unfair as sex. So there's... We take care of the... The church belongs to God. Who uses us is, is the question. And we will abide by whatever that decision is, whenever it's made. And it really is not of all that much importance to us. It seems to be to them. But uh, of course we want to stand on principle. But the principle involved is the privilege of the people to use the building that they have had all this time and not be taken away by an heretical church. Well, I'm very gratified, of course, with the action of the court today and feel as though it, it validates what I thought was the, the right thing in the case because I've never had any question but what the, uh, the property belonged to, the group at St. David's who remained loyal to the Episcopal Church and not to the schismatic group. I'm not sure exactly how to approach communities to get CTCs in, but uh, what we will do is, in this case, we're going to ask communities to respond to us or property owners in, in communities if, in fact, they have property that they think will fit our needs. And that's what the press release uh, today is all about. And the reason I can't specify that is because if it's a colder than normal winter in Oklahoma and the Oklahoma customers use the gas, of course there would not be as large a credit, so their bill might increase slightly. But if it's an average winter, the volumes of gas available are sold out of state, there would be a reduction in their bill by the credit that we're suggesting. Yes, it's not going to be easy, but I believe uh, there will be another election, and uh, we'll just have to work along. It means that th those who are in favor of ERA must get out and work. The other side has been very diligent. They are well organized. They're well financed. We have sort of expected this to come without a lot of work, just because we believe in equality. But equality doesn't come without work, and I think now the pro ERA people realize that.
Well, I think our main objective in this lawsuit is to uh, make Oklahoma City aware of the problems that they have been creating in the last two or three years. From uh, You go in your waterways and you cement lining them, and you're forcing your water down here on top of us at a much faster rate than normal, which causes flood problems. And it's been serious in the last three or four years, and it's going to get more serious. And we as a group of farmers realize that we're going to have to do something about it, or we're going to be forced to go out of business in the next 10 years. And the Arcadia, we would probably have to take the deposition of some members of the Corps who have made a, a study on this. That obviously runs into time. We have a very fine residential area uh, fronting 27th Street and more, and right across the street would be our heaviest industrial zoning. Uh, they are concerned with both noise pollution, site pollution, uh, the encroachment of heavy industrial areas on an area master plan for residential zoning. Well, I think their concern is as much fact that they're going to become a part of the community that they don't want to disrupt the lifestyles in there and they have enough land within their rail facility to provide for screening and buffering of the existing homes in the area they're in a low density housing area now mostly acreage type homes and uh, they propose to build berms and uh, whatever else is necessary to screen the site in terms of their facility from sight and sound both. But you will go back, say you lose in the 10th Circuit, you lose in the Supreme Court, then you go to both. Right now and say, Judge, we have tried it, we have followed. We will be utilizing the, uh, the opinion, uh, which we think did not properly cover some of the subjects that are of great concern to us and be stressing some of the areas that the, uh, that the panel that heard the case did not give, uh, we think, enough attention to, particularly in terms of uh, the danger to society by putting high-risk inmates in low-security institutions. Uh, that was uh, treated in a rather cavalier manner, I think, by the, by the panel that heard this, and we consider it to be an extremely important uh, position that should be examined by the entire uh, circuit court. The law does not require that uh, five that we sh that each of those who were convicted were the five involved. It requires that as to each defendant convicted, that they find that the defendant convicted, along with four others, were involved in conducting a gambling business. And so it could be, you know, in each one of those, they'd have to make that separate kind of decision. I have a personal policy that I will never run against an incumbent governor, regardless of the party or my personal differences or friendship with him. Uh, I just don't think the job of a lieutenant governor is to 
spend a year and a half trying to say that the governor shouldn't be in office, nor the governor's trying to say the lieutenant governor. So, so if you keep that in mind, uh, I would never run against an incumbent. Now, the second part of the question would be, suppose the incumbent is not running for re-election. Uh, at this stage of the game, as I look at it, I would say I would lean, I would uh, be inclined, I would be um, almost, without saying 100%, I would be almost certain that I would be a, be a candidate. I heard the glass break while I ran around and come over here and she sitting up there just squatted down where those officers are now. Right on the sill, just squatted down there. And she was looking around at people. She wouldn't speak to nobody, wouldn't say nothing. And they was trying to get her to go back in. There's a man and a lady standing right over there trying to get her to go back in and she wouldn't do it. And I'd come over here and I ask her to go back in, let's talk. And she wouldn't say nothing. She'd just look at you and so she just sat down on the sill and caught a hold and out she come. Hit the ground, hit the concrete there. And I state that he is using a cover-up in regard to the Sun Died in Community Center, that when they have troubles, they do not list them from the Sun Tide, but they do list those from the Thunderbird Inn, and those from the Sun Tide Inn, they give a home address instead of a Sun Tide Inn address. The real disturbing aspect of this is the uh, practically complete uh, inaccuracy about it. There have been three inmates returned to other institutions from the uh, the Sun Tide, and uh, there just has been very little of the kinds of things going on at the Sun Tide that uh, that Sandy alleges. No one that I know of on that street was consulted about the street closing. We are very upset about it. And in case the council hasn't considered the possibility of a person in a house next to these walls needing a fire, fire truck or an ambulance, how are, is that vehicle going to get there in time? These children should not be playing in the streets, but they should have the right to cross the street in safety. Looking both ways means nothing. When a car turns off a of western, doing at least 40, the child has a chance to get across the street and the car cannot stop in time. If these streets are closed, Uh, Avondale has natural speed reducers. You have the traffic light, you have the town hall where the police department is housed, you have the shopping center itself. Traffic from Western automatically slows down to 25 miles an hour. This does not occur at any street in the 11 streets named. The blocks are long. You can you put a stop sign in the middle. A slow children's sign means nothing. The cars are traveling too fast. There are other people to be considered. Nichols Hills Fire Department, as well as the Village Fire Department, the Oklahoma City Fire Department, the Police Department from those three areas, because they do work in cooperation. The Street Department, street cleaners, maintenance, sand crews, pavement crews, St. Anthony's Coronary Unit, Amcare, the City Bus Company. Someone's maid rides that bus down Western. The Water Department. <laughs> Yeah, they will.
will take care of some human errors, uh, and that uh, you know when it's entered in the system, it's verified, and uh, if it don't fit, uh, if the name don't fit, or if it's a you know an individual signer, and we find a forward some other member of the family, it would uh, kick out such as that. So uh, it's not a new system; it's been in uh, a number of other offices in the country, and it's proved quite satisfactory. So we're looking forward to getting into it. Well, I had a problem with uh, their justification of it, uh, their taxes, that uh, for the year 1976, they charged their customers for their federal income taxes of $36.3 million, but their figures show that they actually paid the federal government in income taxes of only $9 million. So I wanted that to flow through, those benefits to, to flow back to their to their customers uh, other things that of course their uh, other costs and so on that I took issue with that should not be of greater as justified as, as they fail to do well that's that's the the basis of the thing over the last several years we haven't got the money that we uh, thought we should from the uh, corporation commission and uh, uh, it's as I said it's costing us more to, to pay our bills like any other business I think any of you who would go to any one of your personal physicians and view the kind of equipment that we have in our prison system, I think you would turn around and walk out of that office. This brings me to the point of saying that one of our major problems in implementing phase two is going to be the recruitment of professional staff. And ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there is no way of recruiting quality, professional medical staff and ask them to work with equipment out of 1940. No way.
because this is a governmental function. It's something that will be needed for expansion in the very near future that uh, we should have the same rate as they had quoted COPTA, which is a agency of the city. And uh, we are prepared at this time to offer them cash for this block or close to this amount, uh, block, uh, more or less, uh, at the time they're ready to turn it over to us. Yes, he called and said that I could come back to school tomorrow and make up all my work. But still, we don't know. We have to talk to the attorney and find out what he has to say about it. Did the principal say how long you could go back to school permanently? He said I could go back until we figure out something to do about the circumstances. Why do you not want to take your licks? Because I feel I don't deserve them because I couldn't have prevented the accident from happening. How long were you out of school that afternoon? The afternoon, probably about, I'd say about 15, 25 minutes. No one person took charge. It didn't seem to me like any one person took charge. We had four different agencies responding. We had the fire department, the captain of the station 29. We had the 
medical personnel from the fire department, and we had the AMCARE people responding. All three people were going and doing the same thing that one person had already done. What I mean by this, the fire department people checked this man here. They went to another man. When the AMCARE people came up, they did the same checking. They checked the man again. That's a waste of time. First of all, you have to understand, President Sadat did this on his own. Our government has announced that they had no advance information, and therefore he uh, assumed this responsibility on his own. I think he went out on a limb, uh, which is characteristic of him. But having gone out on a limb, it doesn't mean that other Arab leaders will not follow him, because he's now made the breakthrough. A lot will depend on the talks that he actually has. Uh, and we ought to understand that now things will either move rapidly towards a solution or they will move towards a very intractable and very dangerous stalemate. I'm optimistic about a solution, but I uh, think what uh, President Sadat has done is brought matters to a head. I believe that the uh, method of terrorism and of physical violence is getting to be one of the dangers to all civilized uh, government. And while, of course, everybody in, that lives in the United States has a right to his opinion and to a peaceful expression of it, I would regret it and I would think it would be uh, dangerous to have guerrilla training camps in the United States, and I can't believe that this would be, uh, that this could be tolerated. Well, as you know, this administration's total devotion to truth, so uh, I would not uh, wish to imply that they might might mislead the public. Uh, I suppose they could buy American wheat through European companies so that it is not shipped directly to China, but I have absolutely no knowledge on the subject and I wouldn't want to speculate.